Hey guys, um, right, as promised, um, I've started the inbox reviews. Um, sorry it's been a few days, uh, but unfortunately I've not been too good health-wise. Um, I'm okay now, thankfully. Um, so I thought, right, let's get this one off the mark and on the bench and get reviewing it. Um, it's of a well-known transport aircraft used during the Second World War. Um, and was used one of the early airliners during the mid 30s um, and then it was developed into a military variant and used throughout the second world war and it was used in virtually every theater of war from 1941 onwards and uh, then after the war it was involved in the berlin airlift and then later it was used in korea um, i think it was used out in the middle east by some other air forces and also um, during the Korean and Vietnam War, whereby it became a well-known gunship called the Spooky. And uh, me mentioning that name, I think you've guessed what it is. It is indeed the uh, Douglas Dakota, and in this version, it's the Mark III that we used. Um, and then obviously it was used during the post-war years uh, with the early fledgling airlines that were sort of forming up as it were. Um, and even to this day some of them are still being used around the world, mainly in the um, sort of less well developed countries now. And some air forces are still employing them and there's a few with a turboprop engine on them as well. So uh, for an aircraft that's just over 80 years old it's certainly got a very very good record and that says so much for the design anyway without further ado what we'll do is i'll turn the camera around and we'll now get on with the review itself and here she is this is airfix's 172nd douglas dakota mark iii um Airfix do a range of, I think, three versions. Uh, they've got this one. You've got the C-47 Skytrain, which I think was used out in uh, Burma, was it Dakota, uh, in the Burmese Air Force market. Well, the Bur Opera, well, the Far East Royal Air Force markings, which comes with a Jeep. Or you've got the Dan Air airliner version, uh, which I must admit I'm not getting hold of. Um, they did initially release this kit as a retool uh, with the C-47 Skytrain used during the uh, D-Day landings in 2014. Um, but that one is now out of production. And uh, to be honest with you, I've seen them on eBay and they're just going ridiculous prices now. Um, but um, I missed out and I ended up getting the, if you remember, the Hobby Boss kit of that version, uh, which again stands up well. Um, but in terms of detail, I would say this one's got the edge. Um, it's far more detailed. Um, and as I say, averagely, you know, normally about £30 plus, but I managed to get this one a good deal with my local workshop down the road here in Bracknell. Uh, they'd actually knocked off 10 pounds, so it was down to 20, as you can see by the sticker on the side there. Um, so I thought, well, why not snap it up? Which I did. Um, so there you go. In fact, um, they've actually got the Shackleton out there for 30 pound at the moment, which I'm very tempted to do, but uh, we'll see. I think I might well stick with a Revell version, but there you go. Anyway, I'm getting off the beaten track here. So, yeah. Um, go out and get one. I definitely would, if I were you. Um, also, uh, what I'll do now is just stop waffling and get on with the kit review. Because <laughs> this is what you came for. Anyway, it's quite a bit sturdy old box here. Quite a sizable box. Um, you've got a lovely illustration of an in Middle East Air Command 67 laden aircraft uh, in the well known Royal Air Force Middle East aircraft markings uh, with that familiar cheat line which was used on a lot of transport aircraft during the 50s and 60s. Um, and then obviously you've got the option of two examples, one which was based in Italy in 1944, um, and then obviously you've got the Middle East Aden aircraft, which you can see there. So, and then on the side, you've got some uh, CAD drawings of the actual kit itself, which looks absolutely stunning. And then on the opposite side of the box, if I turn it out the right way, <coughs> excuse me, Obviously, you've got the two colour call-outs which are based in the kit. 
and then obviously you've got a list of Humbro paints although I don't use Humbro so you, what you can is just do it on the Color Cool app and basically sort out whichever brand of paints you're going to need anyway what we'll do as per normal I'll get the instruction sheet out first I've got it all in the bag and as usual Airfix will have it in one big bag Okay, unlike most manufacturers which separate them but hey I'm not going to rant on about that what we do first, we get out the instruction sheet, go through that, and take it from there. So here we go, we've got the normal sort of paper pamphlet design of instruction sheet from Airfix. A little history about the aircraft itself, which you can see there in, I think, about four or five different languages. And on the inside as well, whoops, jumped the page there. If I can get that out. There you go, and then obviously you've got all the symbols for the various parts of the assembly which you can see there. Anyway, we'll start off with the main floor section, adding the rudder pedals, uh, which you can see there. Then you've got your control panel, and obviously you've got the option of putting down a decal supplied in the kit. Add the control column to the front cockpit section floor. And then obviously add the pilot and co-pilot seats. Then you've got the yokes there for the actual uh, control uh, levers, which you can see there. And then the pilot's going if you want to put them in. You've got the rear bulkhead and navigator's bulkhead station there. And obviously the rest of the bulkheads go together, including the rack for uh, wherever they put their flight crew uh, bags etc and that's how it should actually sit when it's done okay next on up you put the rear bulkhead on the lower floor as it were and either side you've got the panels for where the seating goes on the left and the right sand side and then obviously you fit your sit uh, get your teeth back in uh, then apply your seat columns which go in as it were left and right and then obviously you've got the main interior which fits in and then you plug up the fuselage. And then obviously on the back here, you've got the tail wheel which goes in, which they've jumped the gun because they've actually shown, oh no, that's the interior of the tail wheel which goes in. Beg your pardon. And then you've got the, uh, looks like the main wing spar that goes in on top onto the lower part of the actual um, engine mount as it were. And then obviously that fits into the fuselage. Uh, so that's that done. Next up, you part, you've got part the actual wing which goes onto the side of the fuselage, either side. And then you put the upper part of the firewall into the engine bay and put the upper wing on. And then on the other side as well. And then again, you've got the lower part of the wing which goes fits into place on either side. And then it's the assembly of the tail planes, which go into the rear of the actual aircraft tail. Then the fit, fitment of the elevators and the rudder, and you can position whichever way you want with it, as you can see there. So I don't think there's any need to glue it. And then obviously you've got the assembly of the twin wasp radial engines. And who can ever forget the distinctive sound of those twin wasp radials? I'm not kidding you, I was lucky enough just before I moved the Battle of Britain Memorial flights to Kota came low over Ascot High Street and wow, that was a sight to see. Anyway, then on the engine uh, bay, you actually fit in the rear firewall and the actual twin wasp radial engine into the engine mount, as you can see there, and then fit your cowlings on, as it were. Okay. Then you fit the engines to the main... Um, engine bays as it were and then fit in I think in which is the exhaust stack that goes in either side and then your air scoops go on the top of the engines and then it's the fitment of the actual wheels which are weighted which is a nice touch and then obviously it's the, uh, if you want the wheels in the fuselage, you can actually assemble it so it's fitted like that. But obviously you'd have to uh, get a stand separately, okay? Because you can't get them with the kits now. And then obviously you've got the fitment of the main undercarriage unit, which goes in 
along with the pistons which go on the either side as it were and the rear part of the uh, portion of the undercarriage unit goes in either side and then I think that's the brakes that go on as well either side so there you go and again yeah I think that's the brake levers as it were so they've really gone to town with the detail on this they really have done their research and next up if I can get the damn sheet open you put the tires in okay then it's the assembly of the rear tail wheel which goes in thus precisely and then you can either have the cargo bay doors open or closed I think I might possibly have mine open I'm not sure yet we'll see and then obviously you've got the side entrance door for getting the, for the crew to go in as it were and then you fit in the glazed windows as well as the canopy which you can see there and the bone dome for the navigator station so and then the aerials go on as you can see there with all lumps and bumps as it were and the main antenna above the cockpit and the fitment of the landing lights your props go on and then you've got your access ladder there which goes by your cargo bay okay and that's your kit done and then obviously right on here once you've painted it primed it and painted it and decked it is basically the fitment of where all the stencils go and i think there's up to about 40 stencils on this kit so that will keep you busy so there you go and then obviously you've got your color call out sheet which is nicely printed in color if i can get it out which you've got here Again, the first option is of a Dakota Mark III 267 Squadron RAF Bari, Italy, 1944. And that was with the colours of matte light olive on the top and mid green. Under, car, under colour is uh, RAF Mid Compass Grey. Okay. Other option, which is the more likely option I'm going to do is the Middle East Communications Squadron, Royal Air Force, Kamaksar, Aden, Yemen, 1967. So there you go. And that is basically white, silver, and I'm not sure if the cheat line you're going to have to pay in yourself. So whether it comes with a deck or not, I'm not sure. I don't think it does. So that's going to be quite a challenge if, it, if that is the case. So, but all again, it's a lovely colour scheme. So there you go. Right. Let's have a look at the kit itself. First up is the upper wing halves, which you can see there. Again, lovely detail, beautiful panel line detail, crisp and clear, not one ounce of flash at all, he says, apart from that little bit of sprue there. But uh, again, beautifully reproduced. If I get it close to the camera, you can see the panel line detail. And I love the fabric effect they've got on the elevator as well. So very nice indeed. There we are. All right. Then following on from that, some of the interior detail, and there again you've got some of the bulkheads here. Again, you've got some nice detail, which sadly, once you've got it all buttoned up, you're not really going to see. But at least you know it's going to be there. That's the main thing. So yeah. And then obviously you've got the control yokes there for the actual uh, control um, steering columns and what it is. And then you've got a alternative of a sort of flat bladed propeller. But there again, I suppose you've got one of two sets of props in here. It's depending on which version you're going to build, I would assume. You've got your engine mounts there with the little air radiators underneath more uh, bulkheads you've got your main undercarriage units there which are nicely detailed rear part of the undercarriage unit there um, this is your brake parts again i think for the main undercarriage units they look a bit fiddly but you have to be careful with how you take them off the sprue then obviously you've got your main tires which are nicely weighted nice part of panel line interior detail there for a bulkhead okay and then detail on the actual cowlings is quite nice too another bulkhead that's i think the rear bulkhead of the cargo bay not quite sure yeah that's the side part of the actual hatch door 
pilot seats, actually let's get them up the right way around and then you can see there's your pilot seats. Again, I would suggest you can either get some aftermarket buckles or just use some masking tape. And again, obviously you've got your main control column there. As you can see there. And that. And then obviously you've got your access ladder there for the cargo bay. And that's the rear part of the tail unit, I think. The aircraft. Oh no, that's the internal part for the tail wheel. What am I on about? <laughs> Getting old. Anyway, very nice, all the same. And then more internal detail. And you got your twin wasp radial um, unit engines here, which are nicely detailed. As you can see there, if I turn them around the other way, again, they will look good once they're assembled. Then you've obviously got your main wing spar, which you got there, as you can see. There's a little bit of a mould mark there, but to be honest, by the time you get it built up, you're not going to see it anyway, so I won't worry about it. And then obviously you've got your exhaust stacks. Mm, not sure about those, might have to drill the interior out just to make it look a little bit hollow. Yeah, I think I will. Um, I think that is part, I'm not quite sure what these are, but there you go. Um, again, part of the undercarriage unit there. Some of the pistons and mechanisms. And that's your air scoops, which you can see there, part of them. Your seating which is nicely detailed as well. Um, and then again, you've obviously got slightly thinner propeller blades here. So it's, again, depending on which version you're gonna build, I would assume. So yeah, and then obviously you've got your aerials, etc. Okay, again, I love the detail on that, beautiful. So yeah, and then obviously you've got your rear tail unit there with a landing light. So yeah. Very nice indeed. It's not right then. Clear parts. I'm not going to get them out of the bag, but again, nice and clear. Canopy's nice and clear. So that should look good. You might well be able to see some detail once the fuselage is buttoned up. And what else have we got? Yeah, right. This is coming on to the crux of the actual kit. Fuselage half, left hand side, again a lovely panel line detail on that, beautifully crisp, crisp and clear, there's your main floor unit and cockpit floor, nice and clear and precise, elevators, nice panel line detail on that and even the actual elevators themselves, I mean look at the fabric effect on that, it's beautifully reproduced. So I'm quite impressed. And obviously you've got the upper wing. Again, lovely panel line detail on that as well. And on the interior of the actual fuselage, if I can get it out, you can see it. You've got some nice internal detail there if you want the actual um, cargo bay opened up, which is much a lot more than you got in the old Etelari kit. So yeah, it's very impressed. All right, that's that one. And last route. Again, lower main fuselage panel and engine blocks. Nice panel line detail on there. And again, the other wing. Nice panel line detail on there. And again, with the elevator, nice fabric effect on that. Fuselage, beautifully reproduced as you can see there. Again on the internals, nice detail along there. And that looked nice actually weathered up and dry brushed even with a bit of a wash. You know. And again, rear bulkhead, as you can see there. Nice detail on that, and that's part of one of your rear rudder. Again, nice fabric effect on that as well. So yes, very impressed. And obviously this part of the undercarriage bay 
uh, unit as well. So yeah, very nice indeed. So yeah, quite impressed with this, I have to say. And then last but not least, it's obviously your decals. Oh yeah, you have got, oh that's good, you know, you've actually got the cheat line, it's just basically trying to mask it off and get it precise is going to be the trick. So yeah, that's probably the option I'm going to go for. But yeah, and there's your alternative for your 267 squadron markings. I quite like that horse marking there as well. There's your stencils as well, and then obviously you've got your decal for your main control panel. So yes. This looks as though it's going to be a lovely build. It really does. So I have to say, I'm quite heartily impressed by the kit. Um, when I'm going to get around to it, as I always say, I have no idea. Uh, but I thought, well, it's an aircraft you've got to have in your stash. Um, and I should imagine, even in 170 seconds, it still builds up quite an impressive size. Um, alongside a Lank, to be honest with you. They're near enough the same sort of size of aircraft. So, uh, yeah, and as I say, I've actually been on uh, one or two Dakotas. Um, not flying, sadly. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's like sitting in a tin can, to be honest with you. So, how those guys did that on the eve of D Day in in an aircraft like that, I just beg as belief, you know, I mean, I had no choice there to go anyway, so, yeah, quite an iconic aircraft, and it's definitely one you need in your aircraft kit stash, um, and, yeah, I would say this has just got the edge on the Hobby Boss kit, to be honest with you, some people may disagree, but I think it's just got that slightly more added detail, as it were, but, yeah, definitely go out and get one. Um, and then what we'll do, I'll get back to yours truly on the camera and we'll finish up the video. So I'm just going to get this box shut. And there you go. That is the Airfix 172nd Douglas Dakota Mark III. So what we'll do now is I'll get back to yours truly on the camera. And here you have it. That is one impressive kit, I have to say. Um, and for 20 quid, which was a steal, um, I'm pretty impressed with it. So I think I'm going to get a lot of hours of enjoyment out of that build. Um, but as I say, that's a future project for the future, as I'm going to get back on the bench. Uh, one of many. <laughs> so there you go. Anyway, I'm going to finish up here now. I'm not going to waffle on. Um, sorry if my face is a bit nearer the camera, but I'm trying to get the camera angle right, get used to this new tripod. So uh, there you go. Anyway, I'm going to call it quits now for now, guys, because we've been running at well, just over 23 minutes now. So I've got more inbox reviews to come up. Um, so we'll probably get a few of those out. So until the next time, as I always say, get kit crazy, happy modeling, stay safe, wear a mask if you're in a contained space. And uh, just be aware out there, guys, okay? This pandemic is not going away anytime soon. So there you go. Anyway, have some fun on the bench, and I'll speak to you soon. Cheers.